flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. We'll be short two members of the board, so we will have to work hard in the three of us. Indicate a motion then to approve our agenda. Sure. Second. I'll guess I'll second. <laughs> Thank you for doing that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And our minutes are from two meetings, August 29th and September 1st. Motion to approve those, please. I will make that motion. No second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. General public concern? Seeing none. I'd like to move down and approve claims first, if that's all right. Just go ahead and go through this one. Okay, claim for $975,988.25 with the handwritten and uh, drainage was $50,662.16. Make that motion. Is there a second? All, second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, Todd, you are up. All right. Um, again, as I discussed with you guys a couple of weeks ago now, the Conservation Board is interested in uh, selling the Oxbow property, uh, putting proceeds from that sale into developing Sheldon Park. Um, I guess I, I published a notice in the, in the paper. I didn't get any comments, positive or one. negative, on that. I can have that copy. Okay. We did receive one comment from a resident. Um, you want to read that? Yeah, that. you read that? Um, dear Peggy and other board members, I'm a resident of Humboldt County and I would be in favor of trying to keep the Oxbow building just the way it is because that's been a nice building to have reunions and other things like uh, good classes and picnics too. So. And that's submitted by Doug. Okay. That's the only comment I've received. So, any thoughts you have for us? Other than your post that the board felt strong about that? I mean, it, it, it is a, a decent facility. It's fairly busy, but I just feel like we're probably better off concentrating our efforts um, there at Sheldon Park. Um, maybe someday down the road you could do something similar to Oxbow there, and at that point you'd have it all in one location. Um, I guess I, I know the conservation board feels pretty strong, pretty strongly that that's the that's the direction they would like to go. So, what is the what's the age of that thing by now? The building was constructed in 1994, so we're looking at 22, 23 years. So, are we, the maintenance and whatnot is that risk for paying or just discussing? We should probably open this as a public oh, hearing. Oh, yeah. So yeah. we do that, Bruce, make a motion. Make a motion to open this as a public hearing. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, I thought that would be over like that. That's my fault. That's a good idea. But I guess back to my question is, if it's getting to that age, what is our, is the maintenance an issue on it? Are we starting to get, you know, like a 25-year-old house? Unfortunately, a 25-year-old house doesn't have the flow of traffic to, you know, when they have a wedding reception or a class reunion and yep. Yep. you have uh, 150 people or better. In, in my time here, you know, the, the number of rentals has steadily really? declined. And I know there's a couple of newer facilities that have opened run by private individuals that are very popular, very nice places. Um, as far as maintenance, it's a, there's steady. It's just like owning a home, Bruce. I mean, you're you're fixing something, sure. not all the time, but it's fairly steady. Um, I know the one one thing, the deck would be one thing. If we kept it, we would have to do something there that's showing its age. Um, the patio down below, 
you probably need to do something different with would be a couple things off the top of my head that would be it would need some attention honestly if we decided to keep it yeah well I know in graduation season it probably yep. you probably fill up pretty quick for the May is busy two to yes. three weeks both sides I'm guessing uh, okay. mostly before but it's usually the month of May there's yeah four weeks oh, there where it's pretty pretty busy and unfortunately we can't change the ability or the lack of parking because it's just that's one of the biggest downfalls of that yeah. facility is yep. sitting next to the bridge and and uh, well, we don't fully know what person that might buy it if somebody did buy it they may remodel it for that same purpose I mean it they might on the yep. private side so. yep a couple people have talked about I mean, that's not similar to what we're doing now um, I guess that's their choice. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I guess if the board, conservation board, is still interested, and in, I don't think that we're going to step on their toes. Are we? We're not out of anything because no. we can reject the bids if they're too low again. If we don't yeah. get any bids, so, so are you, what are you, what are your thoughts as far as putting it out? I think um, a couple of weeks. Yeah, I guess I had well, two weeks would be September 26th. I think that might be a little Tiny. quick. Yeah. I, I'd maybe look more towards the third or the tenth of October. I was going to see if you guys had any thoughts. Let's on which day would be better to your plan? Yeah, that's four weeks. Make sure you've got your yep. Aware of. I know I mentioned this two weeks ago, but the conservation board would, and it's it's your choice, but they're feeling was to do the sealed bid thing again and they wanted to keep the reserve where it was before which was 150,000. Okay, that's fair enough. Do you want to check it on October 10th for the time? Uh -huh. I was going to ask, did you have a time in mind that you wanted to use and then that far out we probably don't have any Whatever works for you guys, honestly. I'd say 9 o'clock. So yeah. Not yeah. 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 going to make him do the opening Deal at 8:32 again? No. <laughs> yeah. So is that about the price value? The 150,000? Yeah. <coughs> That's what it's going to be. All right. Does someone want to make that a motion? I uh, will. Carl for more. Yeah. You get Carl on here. I remember that last time. I don't know what's going on here. So board made motion for October 10th with the opening. I will second it. Nine o'clock. Second the Bruce. All in favor? Aye. Maybe we need to consider uh, some type of signage out there. That's something that I thought would be a good idea. I mean, you have a lot of traffic on Highway 3. you got to catch it. Yeah. Highway, that's something I didn't do before. That was something I probably should have. Yep. Yeah. That would be a good idea. I think. So you also yeah. thought about going to like realtors and just saying I, before they contact <laughs> realtors, I mean they were aware of it. Okay. Um, I mean they're not going to get any commissions. Yeah, that's the problem. They don't want to push it unless they're getting it. That might be an option too. Yeah. If, if you want to address it, but you know this seems to work for that. Yeah, John. Well, John, Faye John I would suggested this yeah. route, I guess too. So okay. okay. All right. Motion closes. Still moving. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thanks, guys. Bye. 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 Counselor that's here in Humboldt might be joining me, but I don't think that we're going until 8.45, so that's okay. That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. Keep you guys up. So um, I've been here before, but I'm Corey Keller. I'm Prevention Specialist with Community Family Resources. Um, and I don't know if you guys are aware, but September is National Recovery Month um, in the United States. So um, we just want to recognize Recovery Month. We talk a lot about treatment and prevention, and sometimes people miss that recovery step <laughs> that people are successful. That's the key part. Exactly. Um, and, you know, recovery is important. And a lot of people um, ask our, you know, percentage of people returning, and, um, you know, oftentimes that can tend to be high, but again, we always welcome people back into recovery because that's the most important part. Not really as many times as you 
fall back into using or using your problem gambling or those conditions, but, um, you know, coming back into recovery. So um, it's important. This, um, we just crunched some of our numbers from fiscal year 2016, which ended. Um, we started fiscal year 2017 um, as of July 1st. So last year we saw 74 clients from Humboldt County. Um, and I think that those numbers will probably, they're increased from the year before a little bit. I think those will increase even more. Um, Lori Lawman, our counselor, is in Humboldt every, all day on Wednesdays, and um, she now does same-day evals there, evaluations when she's there. In the past, if someone wanted to do a same-day evaluation, they typically have to go to Fort Dodge. And sometimes when you're um, right in that moment of readiness, exactly, um, even that kind of small commute might make a difference in kind of convincing someone to get to take that first step. Oh, that's right. Exactly. Um, so that has been um, that has been really important, and um, we're seeing great success with that in all of our outpatient offices. Um, so that's a good thing. Um, so what I've got here is just um, a proclamation declaring recovery month in Humboldt County. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and read it, and then if you guys want to see it, um, and then Peggy's got a copy of it, so she'll probably put it on your. Um, uh, I can't. Yes, or not your agenda, your um, letterhead as well. Oh, okay. So, um, so whereas behavioral health is an essential part of overall wellness, and whereas individuals with mental health and substance abuse use challenges can recover and live full and successful lives, and whereas the stigma that too often prevents individuals from seeking much needed care can be significantly reduced by learning about mental illness and substance use and seeing a person for who they are. And whereas dedicated professionals and everyday citizens of Humboldt County with skills and empathy support individuals with mental health and substance abuse challenges through the treatment and recovery process with a strong message of hope, support, and respect. And whereas Humboldt County and Community Family Resources are committed to reducing the impact of mental health and substance use challenges on Humboldt County citizens and helping individuals experience long-term recovery. Now, therefore, we, the Humboldt County Board of Supervisors, do hereby proclaim the month of September 2016 as recovery month throughout Humboldt County, and we commend this observance to all our citizens. That's that, yeah. So, I know there's something to do here, so if you guys want to go ahead and sign it, and if you wouldn't mind if I could get a photograph of you guys, too. I don't know that. Please try it Well, before we do that, I'd make a motion that we authorize the chairman to sign the petition. I'll second that. All right, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Let's see here. Yeah, we um, also, I know that I had, um, the last time I was here I mentioned some of the stuff going on um, in prevention in Humboldt County, but um, this year we are expanding a lot of those prevention efforts, which is awesome. We will now be doing three of the grades in the elementary school for the two drugs for group two work for drugs program, um, and um, so that's really exciting. Um, we're going to be starting that after Christmas break. Um, that tends to be a better time of year for schools. They're so crazy the beginning of the school year, so yeah. that's good. And then we also are doing a lot more. Um, we do a juvenile drug education class um, and it's a prevention class called Prime for Life and it's actually the um, curriculum that we use for um, impaired driving offenses but we implement it with the high schoolers and condense it down and so we get referrals from the school and from the JPO here in Humboldt County and we've been getting more and more referrals for that class which isn't a necessarily good thing because usually it's exactly because usually it's from Exactly, and so typically I'd only really, um, we'd only really have them in Webster City and Fort Dodge because that's where we were getting the referrals, but we're doing more and more in Humboldt now, which is a good thing. Um, yeah. So, yeah. wonderful. So if you guys don't mind, yeah, I think you can pick a copy of it. Yeah. Okay, wonderful. Um, Yes, we see a lot of success in that. And we're actually getting referrals not even from kids who you have gotten in trouble for using substances, but for kids who maybe have um, gotten in trouble for some sort of violent things or high risk behavior, because we know that any high risk behavior correlates with the chances of someone using substances being a lot higher. So, okay. yeah. Well, I to get a little bit of a drain map. Yeah. 
My daughter-in-law has been in there for 10 years, and I thought the law really should be grandfathered in the way it is. They shouldn't change it from residential to commercial. The other thing is, just because they did, why do they increase the value $5,000 for the same property? Nothing done, been done differently. Why, 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 whatever stuff that's taxed didn't go up, why should this go up? I was going to say it's the factor that in the commercial, commercial and residential. Right. Commercial property is more value than residential. Right? That's set by the state, isn't it? No, that's set by us. Okay. It is um, based upon um, basically it doesn't matter where you're located in um, Humboldt County as far as commercial property does. Is concerned on um, the market. Whereas residential, it makes a difference whether you're buying a house in Humboldt versus uh, Dakota City. Okay. And that was based upon sales when we set the map area factor, which was quite a while ago, quite a few years ago. That was based upon sales that we analyzed. <coughs> Well, I don't really think that there's anything that can be changed at this point. We don't have any ability to do anything. Wait, how much did the tax, the tax go up on the commercial property? How much? Yeah. It went, well, yeah, from... $240. Yeah. Isn't that what I think that might be right. A year? It was 944 at residential. Yeah, it's commercial, but all that. Cut, cut, property tax, business property tax credit. And uh, business property tax credit amounted to $733. Right. Does that change from year to year? Yes, it does. Could that go up or go down, or how does that work? Well, it's some formula that... So it can change? Yes. And Depends on how many signed up and how much money the state has. Is this the second year of it or third? Uh, what is it, Peggy? Second or third? Third. 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 It might be third. Yeah. It's probably is the start of the third already. Yeah. So have you seen it kind of go down a little bit or come up? It's hard to say. Oh, it's been going up. Okay. Um, but it, it just depends on how, how much talk? money yeah, is set down to the state that they can uh, allocate. Yeah, allocate for this. Okay. Well, I've heard many times about the grandfather thing of 10 years. Does that not hold up in a case like this? I don't know. Fences, right. fences, I mean, I'm hauling stove I talked to him one time, and the fence has been in there 10 years, and nobody opposed to it. The fence is a property line, no matter where it is. And I just talked to another person that's having this group, and the county told the same thing. 10 years, and that's what it is. Well, she's been in there 10 years. And now all of a sudden they want to change this and tax this now? I talked to the city, they want to look commercial because the next thing I'm going to do if I get stuck with this, and I'm going to put some big commercial buildings on them, residential lot. Well, you'll have to go through the city's um, tax code to see what requirements on what you put there, I would guess. What's that? You will have to go through the city's requirements on what you can build there. It's probably in a residential zoned area, but as far as our office is concerned, we don't take into consideration zoning. We take into consideration units. Well, I don't think it, it looks sound to me like you got a wish and situation here. But in other words, you wish have had a commercial several years ago? What? We should have had it commercial several years ago, you mean? Yeah, but I, I'd say if, if this grandfather holds up. We don't have any, we don't go by any rules of grandfathering in or any such thing in our office. We don't really exempt from any rules already. We have our rules that we follow with the uh, Department of Revenue, yeah, with the Department of Revenue, the rules that we, our guidelines. Yeah. Okay. At this point, we couldn't change anything. It's nice to be brought clear of what's going on. You have to speak with your attorney on that other part. Yeah. Okay. I'll talk to my attorney. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.
All right. Nine o'clock. And I believe, um, oh, this is Janice's turn already. Yeah. I'm sorry. You got another one for you to go to sleep. Yeah, that's hmm? a letter from the oh, hang on. city of New York City. They wanted to request a statement of the access for a property yeah. they acquired last August. Okay. Um, this has been in the paper. This is where they're probably going to be putting a new well. Yeah, that's what I understand. And they had them abated at the time they acquired it, and I just don't abate future taxes, so that's why they're back here to have the current year taxes abated. So they can't abate it now. Yeah. yeah. And then that should remain tax exempt from here on out. Then it'll be the <laughs> city, yeah. transfer. Will be done, yep, so. it's all. All right. Here will be. Entertain motion approved. She'll go. Second. Oh. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Good evening. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. Thanks, Janice. Mm -hmm. yeah. that point in time, several heirs 
according to myself and some others, we thought were done on the reclassification. So we met several different times <coughs> to change those reclassifications again, trying to make them more close to what should have been done, we thought. But in the meantime, it looks like to me, they were not done all the time. So we had, what, five, six different types of reclassifications that we did over the process. What did you Rick? At least three or four, didn't it? Yeah. And, and we were all aware of that because we were going back and forth and some changes were made. And we had a couple good meetings out of box. We had a couple good meetings. Okay. Okay. We came here in May. In the May time frame, we had a meeting in here where U.S. trustees okayed the reclassification at that point in time. At that point in time, the Wayne Weimers asked Rick personally, are these numbers close to where we should be? And he said, well, we're within the ballpark. Okay. And that was a comment made. I have these that came June 3rd in the mail. That was a copy that everybody in the district got of those yeah. copies. On those copies, the total dollar amount that we were going to have, including the main, lateral I, lateral L, all the special classifications came to $757,850. Okay. The one that came in the mail. That was June what? Huh? It was mailed here. June 3rd, okay. to everybody out here. Thank you. What was the dollar $757,850 and change. Okay. That was the dollar amount that came out to everybody in the packet. Okay. You had a hearing like the 20-something of June, and I was not able to become, because I was sitting in the hospital in Fort Dodge that day, but Dwayne was here and said there was really one objection. You looked at it, and you okayed it, and you moved on to the classification of it. When I received my bill after September 1st in the mail for DD2, that bill had not only gone up from this one again by 18 to 28% above this. So I don't think that's really close to being numbers we had to deal with. Mm -hmm. So then I asked a little bit farther. The dollars amount, total dollars being assessed on the rolls right now is $1,035,132. Total assessment. Now that's another 36% increase from the ones we got in the mail. Mm -hmm. You know, um, to me that's not right. Uh, uh, I, I looked through this whole report and you know, it says higher damages, but we had those damages figured at $110,000 and they're actually 120000 in the final report here. Um, mitigation, um, didn't idols mitigate 75% of all the mitigated acres? Yes. And the other 25% was assessed to the, to the actual owners of it. Because yes. I got a bill for $10,000 and 25% of that is my mitigated cost. So the reason on, on the one there, the cost of mitigation was more than the engineer estimated. There is, no, there is no mitigation in this. There shouldn't be because it should all be taken care of with idle or it should be taken care of the landowners. There is no extra increase in here of that. But that's what you claim. You claim that the engineering cost is more because of multiple reclassifications. Well, one, yes, I can see. The rest of them were basically mistakes that should have been taken care of by your firm. The second one is when we start charging interest, how come you can charge $10,000 for your firm for interest for this cost for a bill that nobody else has done? We charged interest? You have a total debt, debt bill of $175,021 and you charge interest of $10,376.05 for a total of $185,000. Coming right from your spreadsheet. They don't charge interest. That's what's on our warrant. That's what's on your warrant. Mm -hmm. But then that, their total bill is $185,000 then? Because that's what it says in your, your spreadsheet then. That's what it says. So the four hundred thousand dollars that we have for interest is all warrants. What was that total interest? How much? Is it? Which number do you want? The ten thousand three seventy six for the engineering. Well, that's the two hundred eighty seven thousand. That's the number. Two hundred eighty seven thousand. That's 386 is for material cost interest. You've got installation cost of 107,615 for interest. Total interest over 400,000. Yeah, so. so that's all warrant? It's all on warrant. All that dollars is on warrant? Because these bills 
are not exactly paid. They're paid in a warrant, which is gaining interest at 6% until there's money in the account to pay it. And that's when I levy and then it reimburses the fund. Okay, so how can we go from 800,000, say, to 1,335,000, you know, because this was sent out to the public. That's misrepresentation if you jump that, you know, $300,000 more than what we were actually told we were going to be paid. Uh, I, we put a summary together based on what we had for facts at the time. Uh, well, the facts that we had at the time came to 790000 because I remember that spreadsheet, and I dug that one out, too, and that's your final spreadsheet that you showed us. Did that include the interest on the warrants at that time? Right? I don't know. Yes, it is. Yes, it does. Okay. And the thing is, is, you know, the reclassification purpose is not for the billing purpose. It's to determine the benefit between landowners. And I, I agree with that, but at the same time, we're sending this information out to people that are given a dollar amount, and the assumption they are going to make is that that's the dollar amount I'm going to pay. Right. That's specifically why when this thing kept changing, that we asked the question, when these people are coming to us and saying, is this the amount I have to write the check for? And Rick, I asked you that that day, mm -hmm. and you said, well, no, it's not going to be exact, but it should be awful close. You know, I'm in the ballpark with Bob. Mine went up 28%. Uh, doesn't seem awful close to me. <laughs> well, I go back to the fact that we got reimbursed from the state, you know, and they reimbursed from the state 75% um, of this cost. They reimbursed $2,182,982. And if that's that cost, our cost should be 800000 And that's about what we were told at that meeting for the final reclassification was 749 or you know, I figured it'd go up to 800000 I didn't bother me, okay? Right. But when you go from 800000 to over a million dollars, I mean, you're adding almost a quarter million dollars more to this project after the fact, you know, and it hasn't been that well of a like project to begin with. Right. You know? Well, my gut feeling is the interest that Mark wasn't on that. Um, in the original, 790000 there's four hundred. There's four hundred thousand dollars worth of interest in here. Four hundred eight thousand five hundred fifty nine. Make it in there. Difference of two thousand dollars. It was in at four hundred and six, and it's up to four hundred and eight. I mean, it's not many dollars more in interest. Correct. There's almost a hundred thousand dollars alone in just the open ditch no. assessment. No. Yeah, but that's a total different assessment. So let me look at. Because you're, this is this is main lateral I and lateral L. I'm not even open. Ditch isn't even involved. Rick, can I see your copy of the last one that you got from the taxes? Can I see that one? This one here. I got Chris over here. When was that work done on that open ditch anyway? Because you know, about two years ago, we were talking about that open ditch. Right. Was there another hundred thousand dollars of work done on that ditch since that time? There's just an overage from before that never got paid um, due to interest and um, what do we call them? waiver payments. So there's interest building while the waiver payments are still coming in. And there's been quite a few repairs, um, sloughing of the ditch, and um, what do you call them? The surface drains that go in. What was the total you had? One million what? A million. No, I lost that. I gave it. One million thirty-five, one thirty-five, and okay. one million. 1442 was actually the cost, and there's 20700 actual assessment for drainage wall for $2,300 a piece on there. Included with that number. When I total up the assessments between the open ditch, the main tile, lateral I, and lateral L, I get a million and 35000 Right. Including That's ditch, too. Including the ditch. That's right. The open ditch. That includes the ditch. Correct. So so where's the ditch amount? 100,000? Yes. Okay, so now we're at 935,000. That's 200,000 still more than what we were told 
during this letter. But that doesn't pertain to the letter, the 99,000 sum. So take the, the 99,000 off. I'll take it off. Okay, so now we have one you want to know the difference between that. And we you take a million thirty-five off, take your hundred thousand off, I'm down to nine hundred and thirty-five thousand. Mm -hmm. This was seven hundred and fifty-seven thousand. So there's a hundred and And I'm just stating that there's a hundred and fifty thousand difference between the two. I levy so, in the account. Yep. I don't have any other I understand that. But I just thought it's, a, it's quite a bit because when's the last time we paid a levy on the open ditch one? So that was just two years ago, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, at that point in time, people thought that that was a tile project. Right. And then we had to explain, no, that's an open ditch levy. So how can, so we had an open ditch assessment two years ago, and now we come back two years later and have another assessment that's more than that original one? Part of the cost of the repairs wasn't covered in the initial levy, is that correct? Is mm -hmm. that? And then there's interest, and there was repairs. Um, so is this the lev this the clean out of the ditch after the the towel uh, blew out on this project right here? Down no. by the open ditch there? No. Who no. covered that cost? Shady covered that cost. So we're covering that one too then? No, no, uh, no. It wasn't part of the billing. The were that washed out and they had to go downstream and clean the dirt out? No, that they were not paid for that. It was their cost. They were not paid for it. So the work done on that open ditch, you're saying some of those costs in that assessment we got two years ago were not included in that? Right, just, yeah. yeah. So why were they not included and instead here we wait and now we've got another $21,000 of interest that we, we're going to have to pay on that. Why weren't all the costs assessed two years ago so we could have paid it without interest instead of adding this 21000 more interest to it? I don't know. There's no guaranteed way to figure out exactly how much is out there with interest. Jana and I have tried working on this to get it down to an exact science and yeah, it's hard to allow for people that assign, are going to sign waivers because you don't know how many people are going to sign waivers uh, and if they more than expected sign waivers then there's more money owed <coughs> for a longer period of time which adds interest so I, yeah they they try and work with that here in the courthouse and get it as close as they can but a lot of speculation. Is the county holding all these warrants, or are, they, or is the county, are we holding them all? A few of them, yeah. Okay. I mean, yeah, more counties are buying the paying, buying the warrants. Sure, I just wonder yeah. if we own them all. No, not all of them. I don't think. What how many dollars would might we not own? I, oh, I, I really don't know. But in past, you've know. always sent the warrants off to the people out in the country, and they had to wait till you had enough money collected to collect the warrants most times. Because I've had to do that in another project where I had money collected, and I had to wait until three or four years after the project was done so you had money in your account to get my warrant paid. Right. And I got that way. But you're doing it now because you can borrow money for less than 4%, and you can charge 6%, so you're making 2% of your money by doing it. More or less. Yeah. More or less. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. How much were the engineering fees finally? Re I know Rick, you guys had agreed to reduce your engineering fees. Yeah. Um, from and the I last estimate to the final billing, you know, we went up instead of down, which I would have assumed we'd have gone down. What would, I mean, what kind of dollar amount did you actually reduce from your billings to accept some of those liabilities? I. I didn't. I'd have to. That's going to take me some time in the file to to get that. I can I mean, get I that. I think that's something we should know. We get because you know, to me, there's a a lot of issues there that that should be a substantial no. dollar amount in reduction. I mean, you know, really, this stems way back to to some things early in the project. In my mind, that there's some liability. You know, when we hit the limestone, we we discussed that several times, and it was like, well, it's not an issue because we're well under budget. Well, now in the end of this project, we're not under budget, so there's some liability in that area too. And I think we should know, you know, at least how much that fee was reduced and some uh, maybe understanding how when 
to me after the last meeting, most of the reason for that meeting were, you know, we had sink wells levied to the wrong person. Um, we had some properties in there that were calculated incorrectly. And I don't understand how after those types of issues and a discussion that you guys are going to reduce your fees accordingly, how your fees could have gone up um, after, a, after a meeting like that. I was assuming they would have declined. Well, there were court issues and things like that where there would have been some time charged. Um, I'm going to have to go back through timesheets in the office because we have a non-billable code we put down um, to keep track of those kinds of things. Um, so I'll, it, it'll take me just some office work to come up with those numbers. Um, Was it Rick that worked with you to determine that, or I mean, how? How, how did the discussion happen as to the reduction of your fees? Did you meet with the supervisors to discuss this and you all agreed on a dollar amount that was fair? Or? We didn't uh, agree on a dollar amount, no. And I want to check too our total engineering because when I looked at it a few months ago, our percent of the project that was charged was a lot lower than I thought it was going to be because of all the issues I thought that we'd have a high percentage comparatively, but it wasn't. So I want to give you that number too. Because I guess to me the part that's confusing Rick, for me is that I think you guys have assumed some of the liability that you realize that you need to do that. Mm -hmm. There's no discussion at all about that between you and the supervisors. No, I mean, to me it's kind of something that how does the, the person doing the billing just decide what's fair as a reduction? I would think that would have had to be a discussion between both sides and we say, you know, we feel it should have been this and you feel it should have been that. And, and it seems that that should be a number everybody should know. Well, there's so much involved in coming up with that number that it's, yeah. But you know what I'm saying? I, I would yeah. think someone, and I'm not saying it's a side deal, but I would think someone from the landowner's side, meaning the supervisors representing us, needed to be involved in that conversation to come up with a fair amount of billing reduction for you guys. How do, how do you, yeah, the, the time factor, was the meeting because of an error, was the meeting needed anyway? Yeah, there's a lot involved, but... Well, um, I think at this point, it sounds like for everybody's clarity, you need to go to the office and find yeah. out what that is yeah. and see what that number might be. Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't look right and you want to reduce it or if we need to talk about it, that, I mean, we don't have anything to go on until you give us that number. Yeah, and I'd like part of the discussion to be how, how our total ended up, too. I mean, I really... You need more information, so... Yeah, yeah. <coughs> yes. You yes. can't answer that question, right? No, we can't and it's going to take problem. some time, yeah, okay. to so come up with it. Right Let's get back to the difference, though. Are, are we coming, I mean, what, do you, what are we thinking here, Rick? Or why there's still, we're still, what, almost 200,000? Mm -hmm. Trish and I probably need to compare what we've put where uh, for cost. Because, um, yeah, ours, the, the, all the initial work was ours, um, and there's there's a lot of discussion in the engineering industry. What do you provide for costs up front? Because it can vary so much by the time you're done. Um, but I think the point maybe is to back to where Bob is. If at June 3rd that number was sent out. At mm -hmm. 757, yeah. we went to 135, and we take 100 off. We're at 900,000, so that's you know, a little over 150. That from June 3rd to now, in my mind, that sh we should be able to trace that. And yeah. if it's not showing up in the numbers that have changed, it's probably got to be interest on the warrants. I mean, it's it's got to come from somewhere. Yeah, yeah. And unless there's a hidden cost that we aren't seeing, and I don't think anybody's having a problem seeing it. Well, well in the final one is back to the warrant issue. Yeah, but in the final, um, if I can find it, it didn't change that much. No, it did not change. You're right. You're right. The, the final for the warrant, so the interest did not change hardly. I mean, it's 400 and some, I can't see it right off hand on this sheet, 400 and some thousand, but it was still not there. The, you know, I don't, it's a, it's a number out there, I don't know where it came from. 
One thing I had trouble tracing on this stuff is, Rick, your final uh, revised spreadsheet with the cost that you had, mm -hmm. there was a line on that for that retainage that we were holding of $78,000. Right. $78,060 or $086,000. On, on the spreadsheet that tracked these actual costs that I think Trish did, that broke, I don't see that anywhere on that. I mean, it, it was never paid out, so I never so tracked it. Were you going off billings, Rick, <laughs> and you were going off payments, or were you going off payments as well? Well, we used payments to the contractor. and. Retainage is always held on a project until at least 30 days after acceptance, and that was at 78000 And then part of the <coughs> settlement for this was that that was not going to be paid. So it d was not an expense, but you also had all the repairs uh, and claims that you had damages there. That's the word I was after. That was used towards that. Uh, this is probably a way to look at it. Um, Essentially, when you you wrote a pay estimate for it, and a pay estimate for it, so it come off of your side. Right. That's why you used it in your figures. Yeah. Mine, I never used it because I never paid it. Never actually paid it. But it was money that we didn't have to pay, but we still had to pay the damages. So that's why it showed up on mine. The damages on the two spreadsheets are almost the same, within fourteen thousand dollars. Yes, your, your original one's one hundred and ten thousand, and your last one's one hundred and twenty. Right. So we're taking the fourteen thousand off, we still have a sixty thousand dollar discrepancy. On damages? On that, on that on retainage that, total that you were showing on retainage your spreadsheet. versus damages. I know different So how close do you as drainage district people, do you actually go back and audit these books or look at these books or check either one figure somehow? Or how did, how, what's the, I mean, I'm not saying that Trish is wrong or right. You know, I'm not saying that Rick is wrong or right. Who, who's the checker of this? The auditing firm. The auditing firm. T.P. Anderson audits all of the end of the year. Okay. The longer that none of these bills get paid, is there going to be an additional interest added to that amount? Yes. It's accruing. Yeah, there's outstanding warrants. Well, this, these figures aren't even going to be correct. No, these are the correct. You'll pay the extra money if you don't pay your bill. That's correct. The numbers that you have are funny of what they're charged. If you don't pay your bill, then you start paying interest on your own. That's correct. Can I ask a question about how you determine the cost? I have in, in this here, there's a, there's a young lady, older lady, that pay, has got to pay $1,213, and her neighbor pays $849, whose lot's three times the size, whose house is three times as big, and they're next door neighbors. How do you determine that? We look at impervious area, meaning a roof, driveway, if they own more, neither one of them have a driveway. Neither one of them have sidewalks. But if it's more property, but lesser percentage of it is covered with house, garage. Um, I don't understand that though. They're right next door to each other. The drainage can't be di can't be different. And one's bigger yes. than the other one. Oh, yes. That's less. It's less money that they're having to to spend. It okay, you're talking. Blanchard and Randy Fredrickson, just for two examples. They're right next door to each other. Why is there such a difference? <coughs> I mean, the drainage can't be any different. Well, it can be, but I don't know. I, I, I don't know the exact location. I mean, it can vary a lot from one to the other, but. Um, is that 100 feet? Yeah, it can. I mean,. I had two. I didn't shrink it, but that's the. But that's yeah, the I wouldn't think it'd be much different. I, I couldn't. I couldn't see yeah. how it could be, and that's the last one. I have to look at. Oh. Yeah, my my question is, how is that determined? How do you determine those? We did use area, and we attempted to use the amount of hard surface on it, 
and then this came up with a factor this is the old um, of benefit. And if they had more of it covered with uh, house and garage, they paid more. Um, but that's my, she's got way less, but yet she's paying $800 or $600 more. Um, she's got less land, less concrete, less everything. But her, this is all these reclassification means we had the same process. Mm -hmm. It really is. You, you have so those names so I can look at that. The whole project started, when we started this whole project, we made a route. You made a route going through the project where mm -hmm. to go. The reason you did that is because you wanted to annex in ground into the district so that you could close two more drainage wells. Without the annexation, you could have followed the old main as existing and gone up and closed everything except for those two wells and maybe those two wells at that point in time also. So that was one of the first things that we questioned, and I remember Gary and Abe asking that same question at that point in time, is why we went that way. So if you would have followed the old main, you would have had 4,000 acres paying for this cost instead of 1,500 paying for lateral I. So that was one thing. When you start looking, we have talked during the reclassification. We started talking on the reclassification when we did that. We said that the people that were adding in should be paying more than the people that already had drainage or had piled by them. And you agree, but the final numbers when you come up, those annex people are $200 less than the ground that I had a drainage well on, and I was in the district before them. So all that talk about changing the reclassification to do that never happened, you know. And so I'm still disappointed at that. I know you can't change that. I'm just voicing my frustration. Very good point. We'll have to look at these areas. Um, and impervious factors we used. Um, we got computer spreadsheets that these, they're all printed out that will tell us. I, under I understand. We went through this before, Rick. I understand mm -hmm. exactly what you're saying. I'm just saying land is land. If we wouldn't have annexed them in, they wouldn't have had their part of this bill. We would have followed the old main. We would have had 4,000 acres that would have paid for this instead of 1,500 acres paying for lateral I. That's what I'm saying. That land that they had, they had no drainage. If that tile would have never gone there, they would have never had drainage. They still wouldn't have drainage today. Yeah. Drainage is worth a lot. And in my opinion, it should have been five to $600 an acre assessed for that annex ground coming into this process, and they're getting by for 300 and something. Well, they, they weren't getting benefit from the old system. And they weren't even on the system. Right. They were out there in no man's land. That's why right. said it should have been higher because they were brought in. And I don't care what their permanent ground was or not. In order to have access to the tile, you have to be worth something. Right, right. That annex area should have had a fee charge for that annex to come into the process to join our water project. They should have been charged as much as what I'm, I'm getting $500 an acre for 40 right across the road from where the tile drainage was, you know. And, you know, that started off at, at uh, less than 300 my total bill has gone up 67% from the day I started on the reclassification to the day's bill in the mail that I have. So I have a pickup out here worth 40000 I'm going to hand you the keys, Trish, and that's now 67% higher, so it'll pay my bill, okay? <laughs> you wish. Well, yeah. I know you wish. I mean, if you can valuation change that much over a course of three years or two years, I mean, this is ridiculous, you know? Um, it's just not right. <coughs> From the original, was I ever higher? <coughs> I mean, I, my concern is we we re change, went revisit this so many times, things start to get muddled. Mm -hmm. and that's what happens, and somebody wins and somebody loses. I mean, it's just the process has gone on too long. Oh, uh -huh. yeah, it. yeah. There, yes, there was contractor errors, but it, it just seems like it's mounted to the point where you know frustration. Everybody's frustrated. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants it done. Mm -hmm. Nobody's going to be happy in this situation. The money's out there or it's been spent, so somebody's going to have to yeah. pay. That's the real problem. And Bob understands that. I don't think he's arguing that. I think he's just frustrated. Frustrated way it ended up coming down. I mean, every mm -hmm. time I come to a meeting, it costs me more money. And when I came in here in May, it said, when you said these are close numbers, you know. And then yeah, we've gone from 729,000 to 757,000. To close to 800,000. So I figured, you know, that's our increase. So we're close. When I got this in the mail, I wasn't too happy because that was 10% higher than what we had in the sheets on the two days before, or two weeks before. 
but I wasn't going to complain about that. But when I jumped from that dollar to the million dollars, that is something that we weren't expecting out here. So now the 50% reduction you had in town is almost back up to where they're paying full what they had the first time, to be honest. Because of the yeah, change. It's more. It's more in town than what it was originally. See? Are businesses classified different than homeowners? Yes, typically. Yeah, we have a points range for benefit that where we have a range for agricultural ground, a range for residential, and a range for commercial. And there's two higher. examples. That's the last one. Sabo's is, this home is 1100 his business is 1500 Casey's is $5. And how do you justify that? It's all rough and concrete. Must it is all rough and concrete. Must be a very small portion of it that gets in. I, I'd have to look at the That's area. Five dollars. Five dollars. Why is not all of Humboldt County mm -hmm. Main Street East included? I know for a fact there's people on mm -hmm. on Second Street, the east side of Second Street. They're paying what everybody else is five, six, seven, eight hundred dollars, and the people on the west side of Second Street aren't paying anything. They're not even included. I just looked. Their name is not even included. They're in Humboldt County has to do with the boundary of the district, I'm sure. 92 runs up along in there. Yeah. But it, it, all the districts are in the county. So the whole county is the drainage. Up. All of the drainage is, is Humboldt County side. I'm just right. saying. Right. Right. From Main Street East. Right. So everything should be in 92 kind of runs up along the... Oh. So if you so go... It's like a block south I have a and then a block over. And down and kind of down Main Street. I mean, that's where there's a DD92. Yeah, there's, there's somewhere in here, DD92, and I don't remember where you put so that. So that'll have to be levied at a later time because that'll hit those residents. All the residents. The ones he's talking about. Correct, yeah, that drain into that. On the west side. They'd all be down. Humble County, I think, all in Humble County. Well, the west half of the east. Very small area. Well, it's like two blocks is what it amounts to. Yeah. Plus the distance from Highway 3 South, which is cases included in that. Yeah, I, I would understand that the entire, both tables and cases are similar in square footage, I would think. All of that water from cases from. Why is there such a huge difference, and why is cases only like five dollars? I have and to look at the Yeah, I have to look at the again the printout. So we're going to have to just schedule getting back together when we can get all this pulled together. Okay, so I and that new system. I don't know if that has anything to do with it that the city has that took a bunch of it west. Oh. I don't know if that was, I'm just saying, if that was taken into consideration too. Yeah, our storm sewer project, I mean, from Jim Sable's corner, I mean, he has a huge drain right there. All of his water goes into that and goes to both west. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot of that. Yes, yeah, <coughs> and we've got those maps and, yeah. But it, it didn't reduce his it amount at all. It didn't the fee, yeah. Mm -hmm. But the problem with that is when you did that, you did not go and take that land that you drained west out of DD2 and DD92, you left it in Humble yeah. County, so that water is not being assessed as drainage just going the other direction. It's all still being assessed this way. So the 5% or whatever it is, that is going east is what it's being assessed on. But you're, look, you're looking at the sheet that came in this one, right? Is that what you're looking I at? I just got this over here today. Well, underneath here, right above the Pocahontas County land, it says DD92 charged for $19,000. And DD92 is Main Street, two blocks south, and goes south underneath the railroad track, goes into Jim Peters south of town, comes back into Hoagland Ground, and then back into Hutchison before it hits DD2. DD and then it drains into DD2 and goes under the railroad track. Right. So that's a sub-district of this, but it still drains into the same project. It still doesn't answer why Casey's and nope. Sable is no. such a huge difference. No. Nope. And it's for a whole all concrete. Okay. I mean, that's just one, there's a, a hundred examples in here like that. Okay, here's what I want to do, because I think most of the basic questions or problems have been discussed. I want Rick to take a blank sheet, and I want to make a list among all of us. And 
you know, tell us how much time he needs to get back to us, and we're going to have to go through it. I mean, I, we need more information because we're not getting yeah. anywhere. So the number one question on your list would be, and it was Bob's question originally, where in the tournament we went from a million thirty-five, we believe, down to nine hundred thirty-five thousand. So what and how is what is causing the difference from the June third report from the hundred ninety-five thousand to the seven hundred, which from the seven hundred fifty-seven thousand to the nine hundred thirty-five thousand? That'd be question number one. Question number two. Relates to, I lost my train of thought. Uh, engineering. Okay, oh, I yeah. want you to check out your engineering cost to determine how much you have left off or forgiven. And have a solid number on that and what your determination was. From there, I'm going to open up to the rest of you to list what else we want to talk about. I know we talked about Casey's. I Casey's think that's another one. Staples. Why so different? Yes. Um, what was that? Fredrickson and Blanchard. Yeah. Okay. Let's look into that. Another question. I guess I've got questions. A lot of questions then too. The other one is with uh, Mike Bowen from Idell. Have they paid everything towards? You know, we talked once about they were looking to have covered some of the interest costs. Mm -hmm. are, are we done? Are we got? All we're going to get. Yeah. So we tapped off the maximum amount that they will pay. Yes. We got two million one hundred eighty-two thousand nine hundred eighty-two dollars. Okay. So that answers. That's the problem. So that's seventy-five percent. That's going. That's, going. that's, going. that's, that's going. in the seventy-five percent. When our costs keep going up, is yeah, it is even seventy-five percent. Yeah. yeah, we're yeah, below seventy-five percent. Below seventy-five percent. Yeah. We can figure out what that percent ended up. <coughs> spreadsheet. I guess the question for Chris, for Chris would be, what do we tell our people in Gilmore? Do they come over and pay this right away, or are we are we going to end up less money? Or I mean, where we got thirty well, days to pay this thing. The problem is that if we don't pay it, the interest is going to start keeping going. I understand that, but yeah. so if they come over and pay it already, and then it's less, can't the interest be deferred? That's a good question. I'm gonna get, I think I'm going to get Jan to come in here now. Yeah, she would be the one. Let me ask. That. I can always issue um, reimbursement. Yeah, I told you. <laughs> if there's something incorrect, I mean. On a base by base or individual basis? Yeah. Except for me. I heard that. I was like, you wanted to do that. You actually said that. You were being recorded with that, by the way. He just took that off with me. <laughs> <laughs> maybe she did, maybe she did. I'll come home and look. <laughs> well, one of the things on your sheet on the back, you said mitigation costs were more than engineer estimated. So that was one of the sheets you had here. And I don't know why that would be different. And we've got to look at that because I had $7,500 per acre in there. And I'm, I'm not sure. But it doesn't matter because Mike paid half, three fourths of it, and I paid the other fourth. So it should be a new point for oh, mitigation. That's a good thing to look at. Because everybody that had mitigation should have paid it. If you bought more acres of mitigation than you needed, you could turn around and sell them again. You know, so I mean, it, it, mitigation should be a mute point on this whole process. But yet it's included. That is, that's a good point. I, yeah. Damages. We went from your first estimate of 110,000 to 124,000. That's another question. You know, that's not a big item, but that's what you were saying costed up. I mean, that's. Fourteen thousand more. I mean, that's not a big item. You know, we're still looking for the two hundred thousand dollar items. <laughs> tell me those two uh, damage numbers again. Hundred and ten to one twenty four. Hundred and ten to one twenty four was the damage. Okay. Okay, I'm going to ask Janet to come in here before we ask her questions or go into that. She's going to explain the process of how it's difficult to be reimbursed and. Um, Janet, come on in. Have a seat. <laughs> or just stand. Well, <laughs> <laughs> shouldn't be long. Uh, one other thing that I wanted to ask Jana, privately before I brought it to a public discussion. You guys got to remember these are discussions. I'm not pro or con for it, but tonight I'm going to bring up this discussion. 
you probably understand where I'm coming from because I asked originally how much of the warrants are held by the county. Jan will find that out for me. She says most of them. My concern because of the problems we've had with this project and the issues that keep arising, is there a way we could lower the interest rate that's accumulated on the warrants going to the county? Now, I'm not saying that's the thing we should do, but Jan will go through that with you and explain how that might work or may not work and how who would have to vote on it. Jan, it's all yours. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, but is there any uh, warrants that the county holds on the Grady Ditch 2 project? I could go and manually adjust whatever rate they decide. The board of right. the, trust the trustees. The trustees as for it's control. Yeah. Um, the rate they're paying is currently 6 percent as an investment the county has made um, by purchasing those warrants, and we in turn have paid the people that did the contract work rather than having them hold them. So that's an option if they want to lower it from six percent to whatever that that would save. And, and the, the supervisors can vote on that. Yes, that's their decision. And that's a question I wanted to ask her privately before I brought it up because I thought it was a possibility, but I don't want to put it up the camera. The thing it would be from here on out, it would be retroactive. It would that's be retroactive. Okay, that's what we need to know too. Pretty sure I'll have to double check on that I know. Well then that's limits. Can you check on that to see if you go back? Because that would be the part I'm looking at. I mean, it's a question you're asking. Sure. I mean, this thing's gotten very complicated, very confusing. It would be mm -hmm. any additional cost, you know. Well, it's going to have to be settled for a while yet. <coughs> at least do that. No, it's settled now. There's yeah, no more. Settled. There's no oh, more. Coming, right? Right. You're not going to charge the bill for looking up these questions, right. are you? No, 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 no. So the bill's out there. It's not going to get any You're bigger. Absolutely right. I would ask you for the interest on what's occurred. But the interest is accrued interest. It's not been paid. There's interest that's accrued that is not being paid. Right. And I don't know when it was built. When was the drainage ditch to build? Well, it's just now. Well, the assessment has come out, and so you've got accrued interest that's built into that assessment. And so the question, I mean, that's just accrued to the county. Correct. Right. And so the that's county has been paid that interest. That's my question. And so the question is, can the Board of Supervisors now reduce that accrued interest? That's because your... Because it's been released to the property owners because of the problems that we've experienced with the project and cost overruns. They can reduce the interest I've any to determine if I can make it retroactive. Okay. To have state or would it just be from here on out? Because I'm earning interest on those warrants until you guys pay your assessment. Right. And then that warrant quit paying, or you collect the money and it can't be really well. redeemed. So, um, so if I change the interest, I can't remember what that field looks like if it has an effective date on it. Right, but you haven't received that interest. You're just, it's just, it's just a, on your yeah, yeah, you're correct. So, so you're, you're owed. And it's it's owed out of the water to, to, to the county. The county yeah. hasn't received that money yet. Right. And so the question is, can we reduce that? We can reduce it. I'm just not sure if I can how far back I can go, so I have to ask. So, so did the county have the $700,000 to loan this project, or did you have to go borrow that money to do this? We had the money. Okay, yeah. so it's not money you borrow money, so right. that's good news too. And we'd rather not see certificate of deposit. That's right, one percent. Nothing. It's that. <laughs> and you're going to get six this way or four yeah. or five, yeah. Yes, yeah. or yeah, if you reduce it to four, it's still better than what the bank was paying. Okay. General Lowe wanted to know if the people should come and pay these taxes as opposed to start getting um, penalty. Is the amount balance that they're owed going to change? Or is it just... Well, it might if they lower it $200,000. That means... I don't think that's going to happen. That'd be on the interest. I don't think... Well, yeah. they got to show us that where, where was that difference at. Like Bob said, it went from 700 and whatever, 50000 to 900 and some thousand. $200,000 is going to affect. The real question is down to it's, it's due, and if you pay it now, you won't get interest on it. You have to balance whether you're willing to gamble not paying it. You're going to get charged 6% interest going forward on your own side, so you have to weigh whether you want to risk that or if you want to wait until it comes down. Right? It's not easy to reimburse, correct? Yeah. What would be a problem with the board saying, okay, we're not going to charge interest? Why is that such a huge issue? Oh, you mean as far as from yeah. this, this day forward? Yeah. Well, I mean, why? 
the thing that comes into play, though, is you've already been assessed, but your your part of that bill is with that interest. So that would mean it all have to be recalculated. I would think. I don't have a problem with that either, but the problem that I'm having with, like Bob, is why is there such a huge difference between properties when the value of a property is different? I mean, these two properties that I used before with Blanchard and, and Randy, the, the property values are so different, but the values are exactly opposite. I mean, what they're being charged. Yes. That's value. It has nothing to do with the drainage assessment. Uh, or concrete, or whatever you raise it on. Yeah, I'll have to answer that. It doesn't, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't compute at all. Well, then, and that's where I'll look at the factors that we used on those. I mean, did did our people looking at the impervious area miss something? I, well, even though it's easy to disable. Yeah, and I've got that. Five dollars compared to twenty for fourteen hundred. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> that's always been the impression that they both got all the man's There's no graph. Casey's does too. And they're five bucks. Rick's going to have to do that. Yeah. Yeah. That's all you have in my understanding. Yeah. There was no training benefit when you're all man. Well, although you're paying, somebody else has to take care of your water. So I, I need to look at that. Yeah. yeah. I have to look at that. Mm -hmm. I, that would be good. Yeah, I'm familiar with Casey's. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> basically all concrete. Yeah. Things too much, Dana. Is it better if they go ahead and pay it, or if you don't, you're in a they not. Percent. They not. I'll go back and see if anybody has. They have. They have. And if anybody well, does pay it, and then there's a reduction, will they get their money back? I'm assuming they would. Can do a refund. I think that's better than changing things. Just leave it as it is. If there's reduction, then. And then we'll be reimbursed. We're going to have to figure out that reimbursement. Yeah. That would be a lot of people. That's yes. going to happen yet. We just, we got a lot of questions. I well, I think it would be easier not to pay, but then don't okay. pay and be reimbursed. That's why you're in here. <laughs> twice as many checks to go around. But then all of a sudden, your warrants are going to go longer with more interest yeah. without having money paid to back to them. Well, what I'm wondering about is uh, if, we do, <laughs> if we do <laughs> have four years of yeah, uh, reimbursements. If we do, if there are reimbursements, what's going to happen? Somebody is probably going to wind up paying this. So, uh, if we pay our tax bill right now, next year, are we going to have another assessment on this thing? If you come up on short, we think we're all paid up on this thing, and here, lo and behold, a year from now, we find out we're assessed all over again on some of these, on these other figures. That's a good question. This is what I, I, mean, know. I wouldn't know. Yeah. And, and you talk about lots out there. I, I think my area in Gilmore City is probably about, I think, about two acres. And it's costing me $5,000. So that's, you know, if you go by the acre, wise. You don't have much cement on yours either. No. In fact, I don't even have a hard surface road, a hard travel road, a part of it. <laughs> so, I mean, I, it seems like a lot. Yeah, it's all things we're, we're going to look at. Trip. Yeah, I know that's clear. I mean, and Trish and I need to see to where our differences time. are. And hopefully yeah. We can answer those questions. Yeah. Janet, so what's the time frame you guys are looking at? Yeah, I think it's different to me. Uh, we'll talk about that. <clears throat> Two weeks. That was my initial thought. I'm just not sure if we can have everything taken care of in that time. Uh, we can. Well, I, I Let's mean, talk about it. I mean, I think that's a strong possibility. Well, I really haven't come prepared. You yeah. Be ready. So yeah. Three weeks. Just three weeks. Yeah. We'd be right in harvest too. Yeah, yeah we just have. What are we today? Twelve. No, it's September. Twelve. One, two, three. That was October. Yep. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm looking for all of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's just a matter of setting down with the files and uh, looking at some of this, and then Trish and I will need to go through differences. I'm going to be down here working on a couple of reclasses, so it's, it's not going to be a big deal to 
far as being here. Um, Two or three weeks? That sh should be plenty. Uh, well, how about the answers are going to they got to be somewhere. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's a matter of working with the file. Kind of priority we need to, you know, you're mm -hmm. Oh yes, yes. Yeah. 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 Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. I would see with your side. I have one more question. I would have to take it in the end of October. Yeah. I mean, we could adjust. Well, we were adjusting. We could adjust the penalty then and forgive. Not up to the end of October. So that would only make taking the interest off and messing around with it that way. That would make sense. So any property owner that has not paid that assessment to date should wait until the end of October. Is that that'd be my I think it would be the best to do it. if she's going to lie another 30 days. Why would you need to? Okay. I mean, you're going to have to get that out to them. Or if they come in, they're going to you tell them that, you know, before they drop the check off. But yeah, I have one more question. You have different variables that you determine these, these fees on, correct? Yes. It's pretty hard to actually be accurate because it's underground, wouldn't you say? The drainage amount for each property isn't. It's kind of difficult to determine how many gallons of this property goes that way or versus other properties. My question is, everything is, all expenses are pretty much based on property values. Wouldn't it be no, more fair? Not at all. But, but why, why couldn't you do that? It would be more fair for the people involved in, in the city. The, the code reads that you have to determine benefit, and it doesn't matter if... But how do you know? How do you know what the benefit is? That's what I don't understand. Well, we, we start with a point range to work in, and then we adjust it based on the impervious area. Um, sometimes we... But that's all gas. Well, we use... No, it's got a size. Yeah. You have to imagine that if everybody has a lot, and it rains 10 inches, you have to deal with that 10 inches of rain on your lot. Right. If you have all grass, it's going to go down. If you got all cement, it's going to go to your neighbor. I understand and that. And it's got to be dealt with somewhere. So we're yeah. all getting the same. No, I understand that. But, but then the value really doesn't matter. No, the value. How impervious it is. Correct. The, the value doesn't matter at all. I understand that part. If it has a $2,000 shack or a million dollar house, yeah. it matter. doesn't matter. I mean, right or wrong, that's the way the code is. Okay. It's, does it help close yard to the, the Sometimes we use it, sometimes we don't. And yeah, there's several factors we look at. Yes. At that meeting we went to up in, was it uh, Clear Lake? Clear Lake. The eight primary factors used is the beneficial uh, acres, the wetness factor, the proximity to the outlet, the <laughs> facility use factor, the That's facility the need factor. Range the parcel evaluation, other factors, and then the final judgment. Yeah. And, and that's every piece of ground is completely different by using those eight factors. All right. Let me ask one question for Jen and Rip. We're over the IDELS amount. We maxed that out. Yeah. So this interest is, you know, basically, because we said above and beyond that. So if we could reimburse some number of an interest off the warrant that the county would receive. That money would go directly to the landowners. We don't have to go back and refigure 75 percent or anything on IDELs, do we? Right. Sir, but mm -hmm. I just want to make that clear because I don't want to reduce interest for I. I mean, I don't want to. Oh yeah. That would be a nice thing, but I, if, if they're going to get 75 percent of it, that don't make sense. No, no, no. So they won't back. We've been paid for IDELs, and their mind we're paid in full, and they don't take any back. We don't. Right. They don't give any more they're not taking any back. Right. You have their money. There's no reason that they'd get anything back. So would you guys like Janet to look into that? And I don't know what the board's doing because I'm just speaking for myself. These guys, you know, we got two guys missing. In my mind, that would be, as trustees, an option the board to consider. So maybe we can't. Janet will have to do some work. So that number... If you do it back math from what they paid backward, it would be seven hundred and twenty seven thousand six sixty. And that that's seventy five percent, that's twenty five percent difference between what they paid and didn't pay. So anything above seven twenty seven will have to be on our own. This letter had another thirty thousand on top of that at that point in time and now we got more on top of that. So So we would have some room to work. Yeah. So it, it there's room to work there. 
But I think you're opening a can of worms when you start I do, do. do. Just ask. It may not be feasible. It may not be the right thing to do. That's why this is a discussion. This is not anything in stone. But if you don't throw ideas out, that's, there are no other ideas. Somebody's going to have to pay. That's the problem. And, and by, not, by waiting to pay, I, yeah, I would love to wait till it pays the next year, okay? I've waited four years already, right. so what's the difference? You know, one more year. Right. But the headaches you're going to run into there is I know somebody like my dad probably already paid his because it's due. So his is already paid, okay? Mine isn't paid. So how, how are the people going to know coming in or not, you know, whether to pay or not to pay, you know? Exactly. And then the ones that have paid, you're going to get reimbursed. You had a couple people that... Uh, I think that we're going to pay this two years ago. I don't know if they ever did. They were going to prepay a couple of years ago. They thought about doing it, and they never did. But, uh, you know, so I think it's a headache more than it's going to be helpful. It's be for 30 days. You mean that part? Or the whole thing? That even, what, what's the difference? I mean, 30 days interest one way or the other. If you, if you change, okay, so you change your interest from 6% to 4% in the project, okay? What's that going to get you? 50000 20000 right. Then you spread that over all, this, all these acres here. It might be 20 cents more less than the town that they'd have to pay. You know, I might have $50 less to pay. Is it worth the hassle to do that? It may not be. You know, it might be better off to say that pay the dumb thing and then tell me what I overpaid and somewhere down the line. We'll make it right. Make it right. But that's a lot of checks to reissue also at that point. <coughs> it's still a chance that the numbers won't change any, too. So. That's right. I've got one other question. Uh, it's not clear in my mind, but uh, 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 that's about the uh, the open ditch tax. Are you allowing for future repairs on that open ditch? It seems to me I read somewhere that you were allowing so many dollars for repairs on down the line for yeah, that open know. ditch. Is that right? Or wrong? That's fairly typical. I'm not sure how it was determined on this one. Trish is going to check well, that I out. Read somewhere that. Uh, that uh, some of the tax we were paying is actually for future cleanup, yeah. and 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 if it is, my question really is, where is that money? If you're allowing it for future cleanup in five years from now, will that money be there to, to be clean out, or Trish. has it been used for some other Trish thing like project? That where it's Trish. all gone. Trish can explain how that works. Go ahead, Trish. I did levy for an extra five thousand on each one of these. Um, that comes into play for any additional expenses, uh, repairs. Tile repairs. Yeah. Blowouts. That money is assigned to that fund. Each specific each, each fund. We have a general ledger fund for each ditch. So it would show a balance, a positive balance until it's used off of that. Right. So it's 5000 for the ditch, 5000 for the main, lateral I, lateral L. Mm -hmm. All that. So there's twenty thousand extra right there. Then. Maybe hundred eighty thousand. <laughs> Keep going, Bob. Keep going. Yeah. And I need to think on that additional assessment. That's something else I'd like to have looked at. For those of us on lateral L, you know, you did five thousand on each one of them. Mm -hmm. Well, lateral L is just that short little stub, and got the same amount. That raised my assessment by twenty percent right there. Oh. Because I'm paying 20% of that, and by putting 5,000, my tax bill went up a thousand dollars. And mm -hmm. to me, that 5,000 on a 26,000 um, dollar assessment seemed a little excessive to me. Yeah, there's not parity there. However, if you have a any kind of repair, that's going to eat that up at immediately. You were the problem, not the first time. <laughs> don't have the option of repair that separate. I mean, you don't have to have that retainage, that repair from the price. No. That's doesn't seem reasonable to assess 20% of the entire cost for future damages. That's a unique situation because of the size of the district. I mean, in all mm -hmm. terms, the threat's 2,500 isn't cut in today's world, and that's what well, yeah. Happened. We're getting so far behind, but maybe there should be an adjustment for smaller sizes. That's probably a good point. That's yeah, that's a legitimate yeah, I mean, that's just issue. So it sounds like maybe we should mess with anything. If they're willing to take the refund, I guess. I think that's probably the best route. Way. Bob's right. It starts opening up a lot of different issues in Canada. So many checks are ones they don't separate.
loan, and then I make a refund anyway. Because you got your land tax going in here besides this assessment tax right. in here, and they're going to tie them right. together. And, and, and Jerry, I think uh, kind of opposite of what Bob's talking about, I would appreciate having that interest looked at because I, I think it could amount to a lot more than we think. If we go from 6 to 4% 4 on 408000 right, that part it could be $150,000. But as far as the the, yeah. yeah, let's do that. Yeah, no, I understand that part. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, and this is what is good about what we're doing. This is a conversation, a discussion. I'm not saying anybody's got the right idea, but if you don't discuss it with all sides, how do you know that we then do need to look at it? That's all we're trying to do, I hope. And then Bob or Rick, geez, I missed the name today. Rick, would you um, look at that a little bit on that interest side to see what some, you know, some options that you can talk to us about if you were were to reduce that from say six to four percent or something in that order and just see what how many dollars difference. Well, I get, and I get, you're still looking at going back, perhaps? I, well, that's, well, yeah, that's yeah. The, county, the county funded the project, so the county's just yeah. a profit. I'm, yeah, I'm asking Jan to look into it, yeah. but if she says no, it's something we can't do, okay, then right. we'll have to accept. But. But that's what the problem I mean, it, you definitely couldn't do it if you had bonded for it. And right, right. Money. right. You're in a unique thing. position right. because this was the county money, and the interest is accrued and have not been paid. And so the county can, I believe, there's no, you know, Legal, anything that's going to be impediment that's not going to allow you to say, okay, we don't need to earn 6% on the money that we put out there. Because if, if we were to invest in another investment, we would have, you know, maybe earned two. If it was a contractor or it was a supplier, that would have been different. Yeah, to drop it from 6 to 4, I don't think there's any legal impediment to the has, county doing it. And that county, would be the release to the property owners. Has the county bought all the warrants no, in this project? Yeah. yeah. Sure, but most and then I'll check. Are we okay. looking at the 2% change? Or what is the number? Well, I mean, this is just an idea, so it's, what, what would money borrow the bank be right now? At least four? Depends on what it's for. I Let's don't. just look at from six to, to four as a, as a starting point, see whether it makes any difference, or if it can be, even if it can be done. The first question is, Jan, is if it can be done, and then find out what percentage of the county holds. Those of you would have to come before you even Let's use 4%. Are you guys okay with this? Or what do you think? Speak up here a little bit. Okay, are we looking at going back to the origination of every warrant? I mean, some of these are four or five years old. That's yeah, another I mean, question. Maybe that interest is accrued. I think you have to. And maybe that's where this gets too complicated. Maybe it's not a goal, but that's possible. When part of it would depend on if the county has bought in all the warrants. That's what I mean. Those are stuff. And if we, we can, I could adjust. They're on a warrant by warrant basis. Okay. So I could adjust just the ones we own. And, and we typically get paid in warrants. I don't know on this job if we get cash or warrants. And right. we, we'd we certainly agree to any interest rate you agree on. Okay. Okay. So, okay. Yeah, for Dickerson Lester Guard. That includes the same people and some of them, but it includes the ones you bought. Yes. Yeah, yes. Okay. See, there's some plus. Well, I'll help you out here. <laughs> it's been an hour. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, you know, I'm not going to say that either. But, yeah, an hour holds your interest. I'm going to lose it. So we're coming back. Did you say October 4th, 3rd? Right. I'll get this information to Trish. So, well, what I'd like to do is if Trish gets this information, or yeah, Janet gets this information, Rick and Trish get their information, and we have full board, which might be two weeks. I'm not sure Carl's back next week. I'd like us to sit down <coughs> and have a work session on all of this before we even come back. Maybe, maybe things aren't what we think they are, but we'd have to have that discussion, I think, before we present anything. And that gives us till October 3rd to see yeah. where we're at. And then hopefully by then we're going to be able to move forward. We have to. We're yeah. We're yeah. Really yeah. We're doing. Yeah. I think that's why you got to go ahead and allow them to pay the bill, and if there's going to be an adjustment, if you find something else, which, you know, that money, if they went somewhere, so you're mm -hmm. if they went to pay on the project, it's going to be hard to, you know, you just got to explain how you got from 700 to 900,000, I guess, the best you can. Okay. So what do we tell our people in Gilmore? Pay it? Go ahead and pay it. Mm -hmm. If there's any adjustment. We'll see if there's Put the new numbers. Right. Right. 
Also, you said you'd set up a payment plan on people that are on fixed incomes. I mean, on the sheet it says you will just be assessed on your taxes the following year. I mean, is there something that can that would stop them from coming in, uh, making monthly payments on this, or are they going to have to wait that year? Code doesn't allow for monthly payments on a drainage assessment. Um, so then, in turn, our software does it. Well, there's a lot of people in fixed income that if they have a fifteen hundred dollar assessment. Well, those can be, anything over five hundred dollars can be wavered into annual payments. It's per per parcel, per, per right. parcel though. Right. So if you're in that seven eight hundred dollar, five hundred or more. Right. Yeah, yes. five hundred more right. could put on a fifteen year payment plan if you want. I don't know what the years were. Was it 15? ten years, fifteen, whatever it was? Right. I think it was fifteen. So they cannot come in and make monthly payments is what you're saying. Right. It's something they have to budget for on the loan. What would you do if someone sends you money when you send it back to them? Probably. Really? We just don't have the so software to monitor it all. And if I have 500 people sending me money, I'm not going to keep trying to make it. That would be Yeah. <laughs> Okay, I would think that's something you just kind of want to look at. I mean, rather than putting them on a ten-year payment plan. Yeah. The legislature that yeah. ties, them. Ties, ties their hands. Ties their hands. Uh, yeah. Yeah, a lot of people monthly would work out way better. Well, yeah. So you're better off going to the bank, borrowing the money at four percent, and make your monthly payments to the bank. There you go, Bob. That's correct yeah. answer. Right. Pay it all off and go pay four percent instead of six percent. You can pay it off whenever it was yeah, monthly, whatever. Okay, I think we need to move. Good questions. Rick, you get back to this. We'll try, yep. to try and have a work session and discuss this one more time. Yep. Before the October third meeting. Mm -hmm. So we know where we stand. All right. Thank you guys. Thanks. Thanks. Make the motion to go out of drainage. Yes, Bruce, make the motion to go out of drainage. So we're done. Oh, we're done. done. She's not done with us, so. That's all right. All right. Sweet. Thank you. Oh, thank you, guys. Well, all of you. It's been a headache. Yeah. Well. Wow. Wow. I just, that was so I feel like I came to the movie halfway through and I'm still catching up. <laughs> yeah, definitely. What are all these here? Well, I kind of felt that when I opened my desk. It's not too bruised. Right. Mine's still laying on my desk, and I haven't had the guts to even open it up to look at it yet. So. My actually land prices, taxes, the yearly ones, they went down. This one up. Thanks for yeah, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. I knew I was going to change. So and you're better off having everybody pay it right now. I'm going to be done. I'm going to be done. And you know some. We just can't. Some of the counties, when we go to meetings for the ice side, they say, well, we have like two drainage districts. <laughs> and we have this, it's like a maze of, well, we got two drainage districts, and we don't ever deal with drainage. Oh, my God. Osceola County went 25 years between drainage projects. We did both of them. You know, I mean, when you add 200,000, you know, so that's lower than that. 120,000 now. Well, not just Yeah, but you do that. I do. I mean, you're welcome to look through my dog. I have a lot of those already. I mean, I have every. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, no. Every bill, every... No, I don't want that. Every okay. item I no, I, I, I wasn't going after you. No, 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 I know. Yeah, I wasn't going after Rick. I just want clarification. Well, but it may explain how... Yeah, I'm going to say, if I wear that out there. Yeah, you, 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 you,
Oh, really? I thought you were just breaking her up more good news. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Chris. I just gave you out during the work orders sheet. Oh, yeah. Some of them are definitely in the works right now with the contractors. Um, I just need to. I think I cleaned up most of them. Some of them are actually um, petitions that have been submitted and. I don't know. Mort, do you know anything more about um, Fern Wachter? Uh, I don't know. I called the other day. I don't know. Uh, oh, you mean the broken one in the ditch? Yeah, no, this is a, a bit, another one now. Yeah. This one yeah. No, this is right in the road. Right. We, we got it marked. The one that's right on the side of the road. Then. Yeah. It's uh, taken off the eight big and it's settled about this far. Yeah, you can see know. right down in through there, so I figure it's hollow down there. Okay? I don't know. Well, we couldn't at the time, and maybe it collapsed some more. Dave's got it marked when the water goes downhill. Okay. And what, what was this one now? Uh, this is the one, uh, and we purchased from Louis Jacobson. The agreement was to maintain the surface drainage in the ditch. Um, said Marcel's looked at it, but I don't know. The so, uh, last I knew from Vern, he didn't want anything more done on that, on the agreement part where he and the successors to Muriel would have to pay for that. We talked to him about it. He so I can fine. cross that off. Cross of that off. Well, we had it uh, because uh, by agreement, this is one of them where they drain through the road ditch, and if, if any work had to be done, we had to do it and build back the property owners by agreement. And Vern. He got a driveway built last week or two weeks ago. So the agreement. Yeah, he's got it. I mean, and, and now it's uh, Brad Bamber or somebody on the side. Right, right. That's what it says. Is, it, is this west of Bamber? Uh, Bamber. On the yeah, south Bander. side. Bander. Yes. Well, they wanted to deepen the ditch to drain years ago, and uh, instead they ended up having to put uh, yeah. pipe okay. in the road ditch to, to go that deep. There's several hundred feet of pipe, uh, concrete pipe. And they filled it, you know, because they would cut the ditch that deep to a long range. In other words, it wasn't the natural course, it was, yeah. But he's, he's got a problem with the neighbor just north of him in the Kachus County. That's a different issue, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's what we're doing. We're looking at that, and I yeah. talked to Hudson about it, and Hudson has told me what section to use, and I knew that, and agreed that he would work with Ferns and attorney to, to try and get that waterway cleaned out. So okay. Something's okay. happening there too. Yeah. Well, one is WRP too, right? The east of the highway is all yeah. in reserve. Yes. Yeah. And they yeah. cut all the trees out of that. And then they yeah, they dug up a few places and took the roots out, I think. Yeah, they they have the right to maintain the yeah. tile, but a little more than that. That's probably. about it. Yeah. Is the water running better? That's what I'm wondering because it didn't look, you know, for all the rain they had, it didn't look like there was water standing in too many places. Of course, you can't see in the field through the crowd. No, it's there. No, no, the ditch is full, so it ain't going there. 31, I think that's done, but. Okay. How about the, did Honey Marks get the, those two, was it 10 whistles in that bridge ditch? Was it he and you and talked to us that time? Yeah, he asked me again about how that would work, and I said he'd have to talk to you and go through it. I don't know if he's, I don't think he's done. I don't think so. Any farther on it. That's what I wondered. So we haven't done heard anything. anything. We haven't heard anything on that, because uh, Harold Nostrum called me last week on that, uh, by the count, old county farm. Mm-hmm. Wanted to know what our plans were. I said, well, I thought we were going to get something done on that right after the spring. Is that with the county? Yeah, that's the top one. Is that the county? Uh, that's the old county farm, the old county northeast corner of that. <coughs> and they thought it had something to do when they blacktopped that road years ago, whether they pinched that line off up above. That's what it says here. Fifteen years ago, the county dug up uh, up along there. 
He didn't know if it was from when they blacked off that road or... Mm. Part of that's not District Main at all. The District Main on the cross is first east of that. That's not District Main, so I don't know why Trish should have it. Mm. And what we've got on there it was uh, subdrain for road subdrain shows up on the 19 uh, three maps running down the center line of a road. Uh -huh. and it goes through the ditch about this deep. And we tracked it back into the county farm uh, when Clyde was still here, cleaned everything out on our side. There's sand coming from somewhere inside the county farm mm -hmm. because we tracked it. Mm -hmm. So that's private? That's all private. It's what you're describing in the northeast corner of the county farm. Better talk to him about that. Maybe. Yeah, it was in the yeah. Apparently, he said it was in the road ditch, the intake, and then it was moved out into the field. And yeah. Because it's on further east where the main cross is, it extends on into uh, Naves. Um, uh, is it Tell it has it now? Yep. And uh, that's where it quits. Okay, so this is a good list. I know most of like, there's a few of these that are in progress. A few of them have to be waited till fall, but it does give you an idea where we're at. We're down to one page. I think earlier this year we had two pages in this stuff. So. What else we got? I just, uh, I guess, are we going to get this update? I'd like to keep an eye on it for, could we get it monthly? You do that for us? Even if you sent it to us on our little machine here so we could, that little thing there. <laughs> be awesome. I can do that. You could? I'd be in debt to you. You would. Be careful. <laughs> You can pay me in chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and Paul gets your written. I know, I know Marcel's going to address some of these. A couple of these I see that are crossed out. And he's waiting to see what's the schedule. On that one. Okay, that'd be great. And then you could probably mm -hmm. highlight those. Here's the one. Here's the one. Yep, that's what I do now. <laughs> <laughs> so I want you to be able to get what he told me. The curiosity guy told me. Um. We're going to turn it to Rick. Rick's just chopping up. <laughs> I don't yeah, have much. Let but Rick have it. I'll talk to you later. Just, oh, yeah, that's fine. Just going to give you an update on the DD125 ponds, the DD oh, property. Yeah. Um, a while ago, we sent in the permit application. That goes to DNR Sovereign Lands, DNR Floodplains, and the Army Corps. We've got two out of three. Yes, that's correct. We have two out of the three. We're still waiting on the Corps. Um, we got the design information to Denver here a while ago and what they promised me late last week was they'd get me a quote by the end of this week. Um, we've uh, emailed the design to the pipe supplier so that they could get them the right materials. The way it stands now is, and I told them up front, you know, we, need, we want to see a good price in this. We want them to do the work. But if we feel we can do better getting bids, We'll, we'll go out for bids. Right. So, um, now, along those lines, does Mark get to know everything you just told us? I mean, I'm not sure. Did you call him yes. Today? I yes. guess he needs a call. He deserves a call. Yes. And you guys know him, don't you? Yes. Okay. I do. I just have Good to point. Come you so you can explain what two minutes they have. Yes. You can explain that we're going to get a bid by the end of the week. Yes. I know he was going to go back and talk to the contract and see because I thought they didn't have some of that. Working on that. I, I just wasn't clear where sure. you were, but please give him a call yes. so he's updated. Yep. Okay. Right. <coughs> what else? Well, and I need to meet with Paul on, on Ditch 3. There's an indication that a culvert is high because in a clean out that was done in the 50s, they gave the top of the pipe, the size of the pipe, and if you put that into their plan sheet, it shows it's about a foot high from where it should be. Uh, no. So, yeah. <laughs> so, this, yeah, this is a culvert. If you're standing at an intersection, it comes in on the bottom left side. South of Thor. So, yeah, south of Thor. Okay. It, the pipe the is, is east going east, and you think it would come out on the east side, but it doesn't. It makes a turn and comes out <laughs> on the north side. So it's not like you can shine a light through there or anything else. It's a 60-inch pipe. Um, yeah, I, I couldn't believe they showed the profile in the 50s being below the culvert. So Paul was 
had some uh, pipe repair going on in the county and wanted to do that one, but wanted to know the situation on that pipe. So I want to see where you're at a mile or so down because what we looked at before it was flat. Yeah. I mean, they overcut it and they tried to dig their way out of it, but once you overcut a pipe, you got to take it all the way down or it doesn't gain you anything. Yeah. And we, we've gone about that far east direction. I didn't bring the profile. I'll be back down here later this week. Are you here for the week? Maybe. Maybe. Depends on if that's higher or not. <laughs> <laughs> no, we need to look at it because we yeah. have it taken dirt. We have problems with it. And before we sock gravel scouts into it, we need to know where we're at. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So we'll work that out. Uh, but. Anything else? I don't think so. Oh, well, the town in Iowa. oh 84, good point. Um, we we got a hearing coming up in 84 uh, for Brad Gabe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The good part is that the last spot that they dig, are digging up, even though it's, there's some issues with the homeowner because of the big mess and everything mm -hmm. else, yeah. it looks like that fix may take care of the problem. There were a lot of roots right in that area that was nearly blocking the pipe off. And that's why when we pumped around that area, it would, it would take, take water. water. And that's, you know, we thought there were other problems besides roots so in there. why are you saying we may have an option of, that they, they don't want to do the, or do the repair at this time? We can that's right. We'll have that project, we'll have that engineering study yes. down the road as a problem. So it would be a viable option, you're thinking. Absolutely. And my recommendation yeah, yeah. right now is let's let this work a year okay. because our tech was checking intakes and once they got that pipe opened up, the, in the water dropped in the intakes. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess what he said that day too, and nobody had a sump pump running. So it's like, who, wow. Who did work that on that last stretch? Uh, Van Hoy. Yeah. 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 So that, when does that meeting come up? Is that next? 26. Quick, yeah, it's fairly quick now. So, yes. Yeah. Okay. So that would be good until you'll have a report for Oh, yeah, yeah. Another two weeks to see how it's working. That's right. If the issues develop in the future, the report's good for 10 years. Um, yeah, nothing wrong with that. Yeah. I mean, so, if you um, did not know that could be a fix at the time. That's right. Study, that's, that's right. That's did not know, thought there were more problems than that with it. And maybe there are yet. We'll see once. Well, you have two more weeks to kind of watch it. Yes, that. yes. So. Okay, and then we'll come along with a survey on these. Yeah, there's some of them we couldn't get the tops before the crops were in because of the high level of water. Um, so there's some we have to finish right after the crops come out. Now, we're getting the bottoms on three, and we've got a considerable distance from each end, but I'm not sure it's far enough for Paul and I to reach a conclusion. That's the, that's the classification I'm meeting with commissioners this week on. Yes. That's what you're going to try to determine how to say. And I've got it how I think it should be based on our initial meeting with the commissioners. Who are the commissioners? Dick Nave and. Bob? No. Or is it Pat? Excuse me. Young guy. No. No. Oh, that's terrible. <coughs> A new one? Yeah, yeah, it's a new one. Huh. Darn it! It's not Bob then. He's an old guy. Oh, okay. yeah, no, he's not. No, he's he's not near as old as you. Uh, yeah. I don't know who the other one is. Don't you grab? Don't we'll talk about it. I just like because uh, yeah, I have. I mean, I've got it. We've met already once to come up with what type of difference we we should see in the land that ponds all the time compared to those that are adequate or somewhat green. Yeah, that's um, going to be a it's gonna be real step yes. before, yes. before we start. Yes, and we just, quick summary, we, we used 2012 and 2014, looked at the areas that stood water in those years, and then used the average of those and uh, made increases in their benefit. Okay. So I've got numbers. I so we've got a lot of stuff coming. coming. It's just, yeah. Know, Get the top off, help. Yeah, I'll help a lot. You'll see a lot coming in here. Um, Bruce, you got any uh, I got a question for you. <coughs> we talked on the phone about the creek coming down for Fairway, and mm -hmm. I visited numerous times with Marlene, and I guess um, her concern, our, my concern, is you know we get one of those decor rains where we get eight, 
six to eight inches of rain, and we've got six thousand. What's your number? Six thousand thirty-six acres on that dredge ditch it's coming from there down. down yeah. to that creek. Um, you know, her fear would be uh, that added concrete, that added roof. My fear is, is the pond behind the the up above the uh, the dam there. That it's so silted in there, the water has to raise up high enough that it's going to go over. I call it the moat. You know, it's like a, a moat there that has to. So how do we? How would we talk to the who? Uh, the Army Corps of Engineers. Uh, that's basically plugging that outlet I'll for our there. for that creek for our, that drainage. Do we have any options to? I'd like to go out there and shoot the elevation of that. And see what you know. Yeah, the the issue is that your your district drains fine because there's so much fall coming down there right. from up by the cemetery. But then it gets into this city. Street. Yeah, yeah. Well, and it's yeah that part of it the is. It ends up at the highway. Yeah. Two fifteen. Yep. Just at the south edge of the cemetery. It ends way up there. So it's not. A drainage district issue, but it's definitely a no. But that's where our water comes, and yeah. I guess my question, and that's what I told Marlene, I said, you know, sooner or later, it talked about cleaning that little creek out on the south side of the of the uh, highway, and I guess you know there's some trees and obstructions or whatever in there, but the the simple fact that I've seen the water trying to get underneath that street. Uh, yeah. At the top of those four pipes. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, well, somebody rip wrapped it not so long ago, apparently. But who did it? Well, it's just up around the top side. Repaired those. Yeah, they fixed those but pipes. Well, because they were set sinking, you know. They were sinking and they, they were chewing away. Rouse Scouts did that, and then they what? That was a payment project. You know, very well. Oh, oh, it was. Okay, yeah, I had some additional money to do. Yeah. That. So they're they're talking about cleaning that creek out because it's I mean years ago when Harlow owned it he used to burn it off every fall and kept the willows and kept the willows out and then all of a sudden when he sold it um, they didn't clean them burn them off and now they're 15 foot high or better so they're talking about cleaning that out which would help us but I still believe that the water on the south side of the down towards the dam is is a hindrance and who do you? Who would you talk to? Who would? I mean, would the city? Before, well, the city should be willing to work on the ditch and the trees. Right, but is the, is is the city, city in the true? Yeah. correct. Well, that's, that's the a road is. ditch now. The, yeah. After you get south of the highway, that's kind of the city. Yeah. yeah. But we drain water into that creek, which yep. drains water into the river, which yes, the obstruction is. Sooner or later, you know, that yeah. well, it's going to affect our water up above. Sometimes there's too much, there's so much water coming in the area. But if we shut the elevation up there on that, you know, you can walk almost from where the docks used to be, uh, almost up to Brett Harkwell's backyard. It's that that high. That's probably considered a river. Is that considered a river? Then? Well, back water, I assume. I, I, I don't know how you're going to You'd really have to get more or something Probably. to answer those questions. Um, I'd like to look at it with you, because I've sure. actually looked at her property and Fairway's property. I met, talked to the city about any ordinances they have. Most, many, not I wouldn't say all, but lots of the larger cities have drainage ordinances that restrict your runoff on your site. Like if this was in Iowa City um, or the Okaboji area, they'd have to restrict their runoff to a rate that was a, a yeah, five-year undeveloped well, that's flow. Well, might have an overflow pond or something in those cases. Yeah. Yes, exactly. But what you're talking about doing would be if there was something that you could work with them and move forward and be through the city. Yes. The drainage, Correct. Yes. Clear. Well, I've met 
with Marlene a couple of times um, and met with the city. And and we're yeah, and I haven't, so I'm not billing any of that. Well, I, and I'd, I'd also talked with Travis and, and I uh, visited with Marlene a couple of times, so I'm, I, I'm hoping that we can get something figured out, but I guess sure. the, just the $50 question is, is sooner or later, you know, the water coming down the drip, ditch to the creek has to fill up the lagoon to go up over the, the dirt at the mound down there, and that's the sooner or later, is that going to obstruct our water? Bruce, should no. be a concern or a question for Fairley also. I think they are concerned does, about it. And it, it's going to do a lot of damage there, yeah. too. I mean, you've seen that water over yeah. there before, how far up it is. I've seen it so high that coming down that creek, you can't get under the highway, and I've also seen it so high that it's almost going over. Touching the river. It's yeah. a ball around it. Yeah. A lot areas. So I guess that's why she brought, we visited about it. And mm -hmm. Okay, I'll let you work on that. Yeah, you. yeah. Let's uh, we'll yeah. Old, if you're going to be around the next day or so. Or set yeah, I'll be done. here again this week. It okay. might be a couple of days yet. But, All right, that um, works. Yeah. I'll All right. Anything else? Highway Avenue, down south. Slight areas. Oh, the slight areas. They haven't really reached a conclusion. Um, um, I fear that the, it's where it slid next to the road. DD2. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. A repair bill in the future. Um, then beyond the road. Yeah, yeah there's the places. The slides are beyond the roadway yeah. and around the corner to the north. Yeah. Now, whether we right. dig out the bottom, uh, see if there, the, what's there is stabilized, and then do some uh, filling. Um, so apparently it hasn't stopped and it's getting worse. Well, no I don't know that it's changed much. I haven't been out there for no so repair. And, and it's, it's causing a meander, and it only gets worse with time. Yeah, uh, yeah. And the only way to fix that was to dig it out like they started and see what happened. Yeah. And, and that, in many cases, is more than adequate. But yeah. But if it does start, if it's sand area, sand seam or something, then you got another problem. Yeah, yeah. So I guess we should maybe look at that as a as a work order, order item. Trisha and I could talk about. For you. For me. For you. <laughs> a work order for you. Uh, or no, for no. Actual. For excavation. Someone with a long reach. Okay. Okay. Well, and it, our involvement would just be to be sure they they're not over digging it. They're not digging straight down anywhere. Um, we'd want to be on the job when they start. The good news is one of the pay vouchers that they'll see is the 12 by 12 that we put a quarter mile north of that or a half a mile north. Full line's pretty good there. We only have roughly a foot of silt there. It's not two and three foot. Okay. And it's fairly good flow. Good. All right. I have a question. Duty 125, Gary May wanted me to check and see is there a plan to go back this fall on his farm to reconnect those tiles? where they missed tiles. We were here in April, the crops in the ground. I don't know how soon you are to completion on DD-125, if you want him to get a contractor to go in and look at that. Um, you know what it damages, but there's tile line that's not hooked up in that farm. Do, does he have locations? Well, um, I think they've got to go see once they get the crop out. He did okay. it here today, so he sent me over. Okay. Make sure so that's on your radar because, you know, we talked about in April, and it, the crop's going to come out, and it's going to be looked at, and those mm -hmm. times that weren't hooked up need to get hooked up. We're just going to have to arrange to have that done. Um, How soon are you looking to be done on DD 125? Well, it, uh, part of it depends on this pond issue. Um, if we can work with Denver Underground and get the ponds built, we probably won't close that out. Um, but we may, if we go to bids for it, We'll, we'll probably close out the Denver contract on 125, and then we'll have a separate yeah, contract. Yeah, don't want that, that contract closed out until the title's taken care of. Because yeah. Issue. Yeah, and that's, and what we'll have to decide is if it's, we can get Denver back here or if we need to arrange it locally. We just, we got to get it fixed either yeah. way. So. So if Denver come back, comes back to fix it, there's, no, there's nothing to worry about. It's paid for, but if, Someone else comes back, it comes off your jeans, and they say, they say, oh. yeah. Um, you pay for you pay for tile connections uh, as part of the contract. Um, Denver didn't get paid for those connections, so I'm not sure how we'll look at payment. 
Um, okay. Uh, well, is okay. that the one on here on this list? The 240th? No. Over no. the edition? So no. whoever does work, you would have got paid for those connections. Yeah. You yeah. think the amount we're offering to pay is going to be enough? Well, that was, that's it's a line item. It's a bid item. What's that? It's a bid item. Yeah, it's a bid. That's yeah. what, yeah. yeah. I, I think Jerry was. They would do that. Getting to that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if they're going to stay working upon the pond, they'd have the ability. There to you go. That's Absolutely. Well, oh, he usually starts okay, so in the time, so he'll be. Don't drop the ball yeah. on that one. No, no, no. No. Yeah. no. Because we had discussion on this about what the location yeah, this was right. what came from the east under the road or yeah. because in that case that's not a lateral yeah, that's, that's private. private. That's different. That's so we're looking, we yeah, we're we're here here field field yeah, we need to get in the field and see the location. So and, and it sounds like no, Gary's going to do right. that or some have somebody yeah, I mean, do so that. Yeah, we're going to have to locate it as soon as that crop comes out. Yeah. I mean, it's just when we were here in April, we had crop planted, so it's it's hard yeah. to drill up when you've got crop, and he just didn't want yeah the ball to drop on that. He wants to make sure he's hooked back up after you guys came through so that they can tile it. I guess yeah, the, you know exactly where it is. Yeah, if he, if he can get those locations okay. to Trish and, yeah, Trish and I can work with it. Where it comes from. And yeah. <laughs> I'm sure he knows. Yeah, I would think so. He's very familiar with his system out there. Yeah, so. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. All right. Well, go ahead, Greg. I'll talk to you. All in favor? All right. All right. We're going to take a little short. Great for taking it back, and Trish will want to visit with us shortly after the meeting. Yes.